Okay, um, hello everyone. Okay, so the next program is is a cookie calories program. So basically, we have um, forty cookies in a bag, and the program said that the forty cookies is equivalent to ten servings, and it it also said that each serving, a serving, equals three hundred calories. So the program wants us to first accept inputs from the user and that's going to be the number of cookies the user is going to enter the number of cookies he or she ate and the program is going to tell the user how many calories those those the cookies that he or she ate contains so this is a ratio and proportion problem so let me use a comment here to explain that to explain the math a little bit just for those who don't understand it's not too complex but i'll do that just for those who don't understand um, just to give a better better idea. So it's a ratio and proportion. So if 40 cookies is equal to 10 servings, then um, whatever the user is going to enter. So let's say the enter uh, the sorry the user enters 20 cookies. How many is how many servings is that um, going to be? Basically, once we find a number of servings, we can use that to find number of calories because it's said that a serving is equal to 300 calories. So if 40 cookies is, is equal to 10 servings, then 20 cookies obviously is going to give us less servings. And the way ratio and proportion works is this. If this is going to give us less, then more divides. The other way is if this is more, then less divides. So if less, more divides. If more, less divides. So because 20 is going to give us less number of servings, more divides. And what I mean by more divides, more divides is 40 is going to go under 20. It's going to divide. Divide. So 20 divided by 40 times 10. If this was, let's say, 50, because 50 obviously is going to give us more servings because 40 gives us 10, so if 40 gives us 10, 50 is going to give us more. And if more, then less divides. And what I mean by less divides is 40 is going to go under 50. It's going to be 50 divided by 40. And then you multiply by 10. Both ways, um, you, you multiply by 10. So once we have the, the number of servings, now we have this formula also. Each serving, a serving equals 300 calories. So again, once we have the number of servings here, if one serving is equal to 300 calories, then the number of servings we found here, user, let's say it's called user number of servings. That's the number of servings we found here, right? is equal to how many calories so in the same way let's assume the user number of servings I don't know I don't know what this comes out comes out to be but let's assume the number of servings is let's say seven so the same way if one seven is equal to 300 calories then seven sevens obviously is going to give us more calories so if more then less divides the other way is if less, more divide. So if less, more divide. If more, less divide. So because this is going to give us more calories, less divide. And what I mean by less divide is 1 is going to go under 7. So it's going to be 7 over 1 times 300. If this was, let's say, 0 0.5, obviously it's going to give us less number of calories. So if less, more divide. And what I mean by more divide is the one that's more, 1, goes under 0 0.5. So it's going to be 0 0.5 times 300. So you realize that both ways, you're always going to divide by 1. If this is 3, you're always going to divide by 1. If more, less divide. If less, more divide. You're always going to divide by 1. The same also here. You're always going to divide by 40. If more less divide if less more divide so you're always going to divide by 40 so we, we we have a way of 
finding a number of servings and using that to f also um, to find a number of um, calories. So I know I talk too much, but I just wanted to point this out just to make it clear for those um, who don't understand it. All right, so I'll go ahead and I'll create the class. Um, and I'll call it cookie calories. And then I'll create the main method. Okay, so we're going to declare some variables. Okay, <clears throat> sorry. All right, so a couple of um, days ago, someone commented on one of the videos and said that I should use the J option pane for output. Um, and I thought it was a good point because in the in the past videos, I I'd, I'd always been using um, I was always using um, the scanner class to display information for output. So because of that, I'm going to use the J option pane for output in this program. And in future programs, I'll be using um, I'll be mixing them out, out. It's either it's either I'll use the J option pane or I'll use this kind of class okay so since I'm going to use the J option pane to display information we need to tell the program where it's it's found and to do that you import we import it so it's going to be import Java X dot swing dot J option pane J capital O capital P capital okay so now that we have access to the J option pane class we, we don't create an object to object for it. Unlike the scanner class, we have to create an object for it. But for the J option pane, we don't have to create an object for it. We just use the methods in the J option pane class. Okay. So since we are going to accept information, we are going to ask, ask the user to enter the number of cookies. We are going to use the J option pane to prompt the user to enter the number of cookies um, he or she Eight. So to do that, we are going to use the J option panes show input. We're going to use the J option panes input dialog um, method. Show input dialog method. So it's going to be J option pane dot show input dialog. And it takes an argument. An argument is going to be the question or the, the message that you want to type or to, to enter to the user. So in this case, it's going to be please enter the number of cookies. And if we use this and if we accept the input, we need to store it. We need to store it in the variable so that we can use it uh, late, later on. And Okay, before that, I'll, I'm, I'm going to declare a string to store that, and I'll explain why you use a string. So I'm going to um, use, um, so I'm going to declare a string, let's say, um, user output, user string output. Um, I know my, my variable names are long, but I want it to make sense. That's why, that's why I do that. And I, and I do that when I'm programming too, so. If you don't, if you're not too comfortable with it, we, you can change it to something sh something shorter. But the more I, I, the more you can the more it can explain itself, the better. Okay, so the reason why this is a string and not let's say an integer is because the J option pane doesn't have methods to convert um, this. You know, unlike the scanner class, you, you can use a scanner. Um, the object you create dot let's say next int or dot next double to convert what whatever the user type in system dot in but j option pane doesn't have that so because of that it returns a string every time every time even if the user enters a 72 it co it's it's returned as a string so that's why i declared a string to to receive that so uh, we're going to store that In user string output so now we have the user string output here so because that's a string we can not use that for for math for math we can not use that for calculations so we need to convert that into an integer as a matter of fact we need to convert that into a double because a user can eat two and a half cookies and that's going to be 2.5 right 
So to, uh, to do that, we are going to use um, this double dot um, parse double. And what are we convert converting to a double is the user string output. And once we convert this to a double, we need to store it in a variable so we can use it. So I'm going to declare a double to store the number of cookies. It's going to be um, user number of cookies to represent the number of cookies the user ate. And once we con convert it into a double, we store it in user number of cookies. Okay, so now that we have the user number of cookies, now we can go ahead and use it to, we can do, do this calculation. So if you realize, we always divide by 40. Um, be, um, based on what we did before, we, you always end up dividing by 40 and multiplying by 10. And over here, you always end up dividing by 1 and multiplying by 300. So that's what we're going to do to get the number of, uh, first to get a number of 7 and then the number of calories. So we need to store store the number of savings in its variable, and we, we are going to declare that here. And also that's going to be a double because you can have a number of savings that's not an integer. Let's say you can have a number of savings. You can have, let's say, 10.2 savings. Okay, so I'm going to declare that in another variable, and that's going to be user number of savings. And to get a number of savings, we remember it's going to be this formula, right? So it's going to be the number of the user's number of cookies divided by 40, and 40 is given in the question, so we, we use that. You can store that in the variable, but we'll just use it, we'll just type it in, and then we'll multiply by 10. So to get a number of savings, it's the num the, the user's number of cookies divided by and then we multiply by 10 but because we want this calculation to take effect first we surround it with parentheses so that it takes it takes precedence and then once we have done this calculation we store that in the users the user number of servings I'm sorry for writing it this way but I just want I just wanted to make sense that's why I'm doing it this way so use the number of savings is going to be here. And once we have the number of savings, we can use this formula. If one seven is equal to 300, 300 calories, then the user number of savings is going to be what? And remember, if we, we, already, did the, we already did this calculation and we realized that we're always going to divide by one and multiply by 300. So the same way, we need to store the user, user number of calories also in, in its variable, and we have to declare that also as a double. And I'll explain, I'll, exp I'll explain as we go. So user number of calories is also going to be a double. And to get a user number of calories, sorry, let me just bring this up a little bit so you see the calculation. Okay, so user number of calories is going to be equal to the user's number the user number of servings divided by 1 and then we end up multiplying by 300 And because we want this calculation to take effect first, we surround it with parentheses, so it takes precedence. So now that we have everything, we have everything you know, you know, calculated, cal calculated for. We all, all we have to do is just print it out. And because we're going to use the J option pane to print it out, we are going to use the J option panes message dialog to print it out. So to do that, we are going to say J option pane dot show message dialog 
And this method takes two arguments. The first is null, and the second is the message. So null, you know, uh, you know, you have to uh, use that. You, you use that when you are using uh, when you are dealing with programs that that use multiple. Um, 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 that, um, sorry, multiple dialog boxes. But for, for, uh, for now, you know, we're just going to put in now. And what that, that that's going to do is it's going to center the dialog box on the screen. It's going to put it in put it in the center of the screen. And the second argument is going to be the message that you want to show. So this is going to center it on the screen, and this is going to be the message that you want to show. So now that we have the information, we are going to start by saying you know, since we have all the values in the, in the variables, we are going to just display it nicely by saying that use a number of cookies. So let's say if the user put in 20, it's going to be 20. I'm going to concatenate it with the text. 20 cookies is equal to is equal to we we need to put uh, we need to put in the number of the number of servings sorry the number of cal calories so it's equal to I'm going to concatenate it with user number of calories and I'm also going to make this look nice I can break this I can break this so don't be lost with that I can break this on the next line so twenty cookies is equal to Let's say whatever um wh wh whatever calories you know that is, and I'm going to put uh, concatenate that in, uh, with parentheses, sorry, and put in the number of servings. And that's going to be user number of servings, and I'm going to close um that uh, concatenate that with the closing parentheses. Okay, so let, let me go ahead and compile. I haven't compiled this at all, so let me go ahead and compile this. And I'm going to save it in, let's see, um, programming challenges, to create a new folder. And I'll save it here. Okay, we have some errors. Okay, so let's see let's see what's the problem cannot find user number of calories okay so that, that I declared the variable as user number number of calories with a, with a capital O here and over here I use a small O so it doesn't know what this is so I'm going to delete it and put a capital O and I'll compile it and it basically it compiled without any errors okay so I'm going to run it And I'm going to test it by by putting. Let me let me go ahead and cancel this. And this is fine. The reason w the reason why it's giving us this this stuff is because when you hit the cancel uh, the cancel button on the J option pane, it returns now now. And that's why we're seeing this. It's not it's not too much of a problem. It returns now. So I'll go ahead and compile it. Before that, one more thing. Anytime you're using the J option pane. You have to end it with system um, dot exit, and you pass in zero. And what this does is this: um, when you use a G option pane, it's required that you put in the system system dot exit because um, this, the G option pane um, um, it causes it causes another action to happen. It creates a thread, and if you don't um, if you don't terminate that, it's going to keep running, even if the program hits the end of main. Even if it hits the end of main, it's uh, the, th the thread is going to keep running, and you need to you know, terminate that. And it it, it it takes in a zero um, argument, and even though most of the time this zero is ignored, you can actually receive this zero at outside the program in a variable, and you know test to see you know what 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 um, let's say test to see if um, zero was received and if zero was received it's an indication that the program run you know successfully 
but most of the time it's ignored. Deserves it, it's ignored. Um, but like I said, you can receive it. You can you could pass in anything, and you can receive it outside the program to test what it was. And if the program manages to reach this this line, it's going to send out zero. And if you were able to receive zero outside the program, it's an indication that the program um, successfully run. Okay, so that was just to explain that. And so yeah, so because of that, it, it terminates the, the the threat. You know, it, it causes the, the threat to stop um, running, pretty much. Okay. So I am going to compile compile it again and run it. So the program said that cancel it again and again ignore this because it's a return now. Forty cookies is going to is equal to ten savings. Right, so so we are going to get ten sevens at end. Over here, number of sevens I'll put in sevens, so we can see cookies is equal to number of calories. Calories. So hopefully, hopefully you you follow the the output. Hopefully you you follow it. Okay. Okay, so 40 co cookies should give us 10 savings. So, okay. So 40.0 cookies is equal to 3,000, you know, let's say, yeah, 0 .3000.0 calories, and that's equivalent to 10.0 servings. It makes sense. It makes sense. But the way it, displayed, it, it, it displays is a bit awkward, right? Because we declared them as doubles, as doubles. You can use typecasting to convert any of these values to integers or but for example, if if you convert it to integers, it wouldn't be a good idea because okay. So let, let's let, let's let, let's let, let's let's do an example. All right. To convert this to an integer, so so that it can be it can be displayed to display an in, uh, to, to to display this converted to an integer, you can put you can use what's called typecasting. By putting by putting a parenthesis in front of the variable and putting in the keyword int. I'll compile this and run it. If the user puts in four four point five, meaning I if I had four and a half cookies, that has been converted to an int. And when you convert it to an int, it drops off the four point it drops off the point five. So so that's a problem. That's a problem. So so don't don't convert go, don't convert it unless you you know it's needed in your program. So instead of showing four point five cookies, it's going to show four cookies because you converted it into an integer. And when you convert it into an integer, it drops off the point five and keeps only the four. So if I hit OK, it says four cookies instead of four point five cookies. In the program, the calculation may be right, but the way it's displaying is wrong, is bad. Unless your program needs it, then you can convert it. Now we can go ahead and convert. Um, actually, we we can't. We can't go ahead and convert it because um, each of these is giving us a decimal. We are getting one point one two five. So if we convert it, we are, it's going to be a problem. It's not going to print out the right number of um, of of um, calories or servings. So only when it's needed. Only when you you know that the output is going to be an integer. Only when you know that the output is going to be an integer, then you convert to an integer. Maybe in the cal in the in the in the calculation, it it ne it needed to be a double for it to calculate well. But when you are displaying it, displaying it, only when you know the output is going to be, let's say, two point zero or three point zero, always going to be an integer point zero, then you convert it to an integer integer so that it displays well. But for now, it works it works well, and this makes sense. So if I if I put in let's say nine, let's to test it again. Nine cookies is equal to six seven five point zero calories. So only when you know it's going to display something like this, always six an integer six seven five point zero, then you can convert it to an integer. So it displays well. I'll try I try again with one last value. And I'm sorry I'm talking too much. I just I just want this to be clear. Okay, so five. Point five, meaning I, I ate five and a half cookies. So, f oops, I didn't remove the the typecasting. See, this has been converted to an int, so I'll delete that. So, if I put in five point five, it should say 
5.5 cookies is equal to 412.5 calories and that's equivalent to 1.375 servings yep so 40 cookies is equivalent to 10 servings which is equal to 300 calories let's try that and that and that's going to be the last one i promise so 40 cookies 40.0 cookies is equal, so it's equal to 3000 calories and that's equivalent to 10 servings. If each serving is equal to 300 calories, then 10 servings is going to equal to 3,000 calories. So that was it. I'm sorry I made this long. I'm sorry I talked too much, but I just wanted wanted it to be clear. So go through it, and if you have any questions, please comment down below, and I'll do my best to reply to them. So as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next program. Bye-bye.